another manual approach to design we're going to kind of bridge um, the computer back to the sketchbook is not just working with fills and strokes uh, but working with systems of organization like symmetry now a snowflake a paper snowflake or a symmetrical um, cut paper design is something that you probably um, you know did in elementary school uh, but we're gonna kind of step up the level of complexity here uh, and work with an exacto blade and a ruler to see how much um, intricacy and delicacy delicacy we can sort of get out of um, a single piece of sketchbook paper let's pull out a page in your sketchbook and we'll sort of cover the basics of um, how to do these things. Now, before we get too far into this, if you haven't changed the blade of your X-Acto blade out in a little while, um, it might be time. Um, mine is not really cutting the paper very cleanly. It's kind of ripping through the page. So in the very front of your sketchbook, if you haven't already seen these things, you've got a couple of blades taped into, uh, taped in up here. This should get you through uh, should get you through the whole semester of what you need, but if you ever run out, let me know and I'll get you some fresh blades. Now, these things, these exacto blades work pretty simply. You just unscrew this sort of um, thumb screw on the back and release the collet by sort of pushing, and the blade will thread right back into the top. Be careful, these fresh blades are, well, razor sharp. If they're sharp enough to cut paper, they're sharp enough to cut you. Get that blade nice and snug back into the handle and we'll get to work doing our carvings. You can probably start by folding a piece of paper in half because these drawings are going to be so intricate we don't need to uh, we don't need them to be full page carvings. Hang on to that half sheet. We'll use that again later. Now, in order to get a line of symmetry, um, all we really need is a single fold. Uh, you'll hear me sort of repeatedly talk about a fold when we're in the computer. Well, this is sort of what I mean, right? Whatever you do uh, to this design now, if I unfold it along this axis, um, that's going to be repeated once. If I fold that again across the opposite axis. I have sort of an XY fold in here, a two-fold axis. That means that whatever I do to this folded up piece of paper will be repeated four times. This is the sort of minimum requirement of what we're working with now. If you feel like you want to challenge yourself and make um, more than four axes of symmetry, uh, go for it. Just more folds. I'm going to start by making a few cuts on the back here to reshape the overall shape of the page. And if you're going to follow along uh, with my cuts, just stay away from our folded edges here. There's one corner that's all folds, that will be the center of your design. And there's one corner that's all leaves, that will be the outside edge of your design. Just kind of give you a quick example of how modifying the outside edge of this page will change all four sheets of that paper. So I've got a single axis of symmetry here, uh, same design on both sides, and now I have two axis of symmetry. From here, I'm going to work from that all folds corner out toward the edges and um, begin just kind of carving a more and more intricate design. You could, if you really wanted to, use, um, use a ruler and a straight edge. You could even use a pencil to lay it out. I'm just going to cut all of these freehand. Because you're cutting through so many layers of paper, it may not all release in one go. Don't just rip those out. Go back in and carefully cut each one of the edges so that it releases cleanly from the inside. Your design will be a much cleaner design in the end. The only requirement for this paper snowflake or paper symmetry is that there is more air left in your design than paper at the end. But what your design looks like could be anything that you would like to come up with.
as you work through your design here, uh, you can see how um, I'm going to end up with very little paper left. Now I can cut all the way through my folded edges, that's okay, but make sure you maintain enough connective tissue so that as you open it, there is still some connective bits here and there to sort of hold it all together. As I work this open, you'll see how everything I do to one panel is reflected onto all four panels. When I'm totally done, I'm going to do a rubbing of this design. Now I'm going to do a sort of process rubbing here to show you what that means, and then I'll finish up this design and show you guys in class. So I'm going to carefully lay down all of these folds, even these really teeny tiny ones on the inside. And then using the thinnest piece of paper that I can find, um, if the thinnest piece of paper is your sketchbook paper, that will do. Uh, but if you happen to have some tissue paper around, that will be even better. Or um, a leftover piece of newsprint paper would work great. And then we're going to need a crayon. Um, I'll have some of these in the studio, but honestly, all you need to do is take uh, like a crayon out of a you know junkie kit that you have at home, pop its wrapper off the outside, and you've got a really great rubbing tool. I'm going to make an iteration of this or a copy. And both the paper, snowflake, and the copy will go into your sketchbook. I'll catch you guys in the studio.